we on Sunday, we've been looking in a series of studies on a healthy church. And we're taking our passage today from the Ephesians, the second chapter, <clears throat> on the subject of reconciliation, grace, reconciliation. What is interesting about reconciliation is it covers, the word covers a, a whole lot of different issues. <clears throat> For example, reconciliation is one of the key doctrines in the plan of God. When we talk about the plan of God and we talk about the plan of God is divided into phase one, two, and three uh, for, for study. Salvation, dealing with a baby believer, Christian way of life doctrines, dealing with spiritual growth, maturity, and then eternity. Reconciliation is a key word in all three areas, both salvation, the Christian life, the way we deal with other people as well as with God, and then eternity, reconciliation, Whatever you get by the grace of God in phase one is going to pay dividends in phase three, uh, the believer in eternity. So reconciliation is a really, a really key doctrine, not just for salvation, but in the Christian life. The other thing about reconciliation that's important, and the reason we're going to teach on it, is that it's one of the nine key doctrines of the blood of Christ. If you understand how important the blood of Christ is to the new covenant, for example, when we do the Eucharist, we say this cup is the blood of Christ of the new covenant. Reconciliation is one of nine major doctrines of the blood of Christ of the new covenant. It is amazing to me how few people know these nine key doctrines. They're essential to salvation, and they're key to the Christian life all the way from time to eternity. In that little pamphlet that we give you called 50 Things You Receive at Salvation, these nine things are listed in the subject of nine communion factors of the blood of Christ. Over the next few weeks, we're going to go in and we're going to look at each of those again. They are key doctrines. One of those nine, you know, like redemption, reconciliation, propitiation, justification, cleansing, forgiveness of sin, uh, victory in the angelic conflict, new covenant, all these things, they're all associated with the blood of Christ, of the new covenant. So whatever you understood about it in the old covenant was, is elementary compared to what we understand about it under the new covenant with a closed canon, a completed canon of Scripture. So over the next few weeks, we're going to look at, take each one of these and bring them back to the front table uh, because it's part of our Eucharist. It's part of our Eucharist. I mean, that cup that we do in the Eucharist is all about the blood of Christ, and many people don't understand what the blood of Christ how, what that means to my life personally. Yeah, I got saved, now what? Well, you got redemption, got reconciliation, etc. You need to know that. You know, it's good to know what will wash away my sins or cleanse me from my sins, nothing but the blood of Christ. That's a good thing to know. But the better thing to know is what it produces in your life. And one of the things it produces is reconciliation. So after a word of prayer, we're going to come back to our text, Ephesians 2, 13 through 16, and look at this word reconciliation in regard to salvation, in regard to salvation today, one of the nine communion factors. Let us pray. I give you a moment of silence as a believer priest and dwelt by the Holy Spirit. The key issue is the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You can't learn it, nor can you live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality in the church age would be personal sin. It could be mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue, or overt sins, and they must be confessed in silence. In privacy, through your priesthood, prior to study of the Word of God, because the Word of God 
can only be understood under the ministry of the Holy Spirit where it is transferred into truth that sets you free from the cosmic system of lies. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This restores us from carnality to spirituality. It's essential for Bible study. I give you that moment. And so, our Father, we thank you today for these that have come our way by the automobile and by the Internet. We pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth on the subject of grace reconciliation how it is, what it, what factor of an unbeliever does it deal with? And what is exchanged in that place so that I have reconciliation? Father, may that be very clear today through this study in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are in our text. We're looking at 13. Uh, I jumped into a middle of a great, a great passage that begins in verse 8, on the grace of God, and goes through the end of the chapter. I'm looking at verse 13 because I'm, I want to deal with the subject of reconciliation. When we read these, listen to me. Look up here. Look up here. What I want you to do when we read these passages, reconciliation is a key word. I want you to find what is it that the unbeliever has that only reconciliation through the blood of Christ can exchange that for something else. Are you with me? The unbeliever has something. Reconciliation is the process in which something is changed from one thing to another, An exchange is made through reconciliation. Are you with me? All right, now watch this. It's important for you to see this. But now in Christ Jesus... That's positional truth. The word in Christ Jesus is positional truth. How do I get in Christ? I got to believe the gospel. The Holy Spirit baptized me because I live in the new covenant. Baptized me into union with Christ. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly afar off, a believer, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Okay? The blood of Christ is essential for this. Watch verse 14. For he himself meaning he alone. When it says he himself, it means he alone. He himself is our peace, who made both groups into one, Christ, and broke down the barrier. That barrier is Adam's original sin. That's how you get that stuff. That has to be removed by the blood of Christ. You, you have a bunch of things you got from Adam's sin that has to be removed by the blood of Christ, and only the blood of Christ can remove it. He himself alone blood. Watch this now. The barrier is the dividing wall. It's a barrier, a dividing wall. On one side, you have the unbeliever. On the other side, you have the believer. The blood of Christ is a key factor in removing the Adam's sin and right? And putting you in Christ Jesus, right? In Christ Jesus. All right. By abolishing, this word abolishing in the Greek language means to render inoperative. By abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is the law of commandment contained in ordinances, law, that in himself he, alone, right? He reversed it. Himself he, he himself, is himself he, <laughs> same stuff. That in himself he, alone, might make two into one new man establishing peace. Are you with me? It's the blood of Christ. Right? It requires the blood of Christ to remove something in Adam to exchange something in Christ. All right, something you get, something you lose to for exchange. The word reconciliation means, the what word that's used in our text means radical exchange. Now, here we go. Are you with me? 
into one new man, thus making peace, and might reconcile. Look, the, here's what the blood of Christ does. There's a barrier between man and God, between Adam's sin and no sin in Christ. Where was that exchange made? On the cross. All of our sins were put on him on the cross so that we could have none on the other side. Are you with me? Because he dies for all sin for one time. Hebrews 8, chapter, verse 29, when he comes back, it won't be because of sin, because sin's been dealt with. Hebrews 8, 9, and 10 teach you that. Now, watch this now. And might reconcile. Here's the barrier. The blood of Christ is the answer. Removes the barrier and puts reconciliation in its place. See in the bottom of your paper? See that little drawing down there? Everybody got a paper? If you haven't got a paper, go back and get one. Okay. Above the cross, above the cross up there, put the word barrier. Write the word barrier in. Need a pencil? That, right, that boy, reach right behind it. That boy. See that? Did you write barrier? Underneath the cross, right? Underneath the cross, that little cross, it means, it means Christ died, was buried, and raised from the dead, that little symbol. Underneath that, write reconciliation. Reconciled. Without the, without the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins, was buried, and raised from the dead the third day, you have a barrier. God sent his son to die on that cross, be buried, and raised from the dead, the gospel, to everyone who believes that. Do you understand? Write the word next to the word cross. Next to the, next to the cross, write the word believe. Because how are you saved? I'm saved by grace through faith and not of myself. It's a what? It's a gift. Not works. If it worked, it wouldn't be a gift. It would be wages. It wouldn't be a gift. And we should know the difference in that. All right? When you believe, here's what happens. When you believe the gospel that he dies for your sins, buried and raised from the dead third day, when you believe it, watch this now, the cross is marked out. I mean, the barrier the barrier is marked out. No more barrier. There is no more. The moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, 13 judicial charges of Adam's sin, one being mentioned in our text, is removed because that's the barrier. It's not your personal sin that's a barrier. Your personal sense has no issue prior to being saved. Adam's sin, 13 judicial charges, alienated from God, blind, spiritually blind, condemned under the curse, at enmity with God. The natural man, the one who is perishing, unrighteous, ungodly, under the wrath of God, those 13 things are in Ad Adam. And when you are born as a human being in Adam, you're under those 13 judicial charges. It requires the gospel, it requires the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ to remove those 13. The moment you believe the gospel, those barrier, that barrier, those 13, are removed. They're removed forever by the man who died one death for all sin, for all time on that cross. What you get in place of that circle, circle this word, reconciliation. <laughs> and it is a grace gift. You see that? Well, let me read the text again. Let me read it one more time. But now in Christ Jesus, those who are over here in Christ, you who were formerly over here in Adam, listen, see that little, what you're writing on down there? See the one circle? It says in Adam. See the other circle says in Christ? See that? Now listen, everybody's born in Adam. If you're born in, and everybody is, the only person that wasn't was Christ. 
everybody out. And, and, and virgin birth. Unless you've gone through virgin birth, uh, I don't even want to know about it if you have. I'm not interested in it. But if you're an Adam, then you're under these 13 judicial charges, and this is the barrier. And this is why God sent his son to remove the barrier. And when you receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, he dies one death for all time. You are reconciled. You're not, the barrier is what? What's, what's happened to the barrier? Gone. It's removed. And what's in its place? One thing, there are nine things in its place, but one of the things is reconciliation. And if you can get crazy enough to say, well, I think you could get out of reconciliation, you got eight more to go through. Because the blood of Christ does eight wonderful things in the new covenant for every person who believes the gospel. Because you're saved by grace. These are grace gifts to your life. And you should be so appreciative every day of your life that the barrier has been removed by the grace of God and in its place is reconciliation with God. <laughs> I don't care what, what your life is involved in. You're under, listen, if you believe the gospel, your life is under reconciliation. It's not under the barrier. The barrier is gone, kaput, gone. From your life, it was removed the moment you had the courage to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in its place was put reconciliation with God. And it was a gift. You didn't earn it. You can't lose it because you had nothing to do with it. You come along and just believe. Now, that's a big deal for God because he wanted to be sure no work could be involved in it, that it was a gift. Now you're in Christ. No man, John 14, 16, no man comes to the Father except through me, he said. But what do I get when I go through there? I get all this over here. The other 37 things in the 50 are all yours by grace, and the barrier is gone. Kaput. It's gone forever. Ooh, don't let anybody bring it back on you either. It was removed by grace and replaced by grace with something so much better. Let nobody put that barrier back on your life. You tell them, go get lost. Well, Maybe you better not tell them to go get lost. Maybe I ought to just give them the gospel. <clears throat> now, let me show you something. I'm going to read this one more time to you. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were formerly far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. In Adam, you were what? In Adam, you were over there in that circle. What were you? Far off from God. Not so far you couldn't get there, but far off. You formerly were far off, but now you're near. All right? You were far off. Far off in a lot of ways, right? Far off. Who formerly were far off and brought near, brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our what? What's that, what's that word? For he himself is our peace. You know what that is? That's, that's over on the, on, the Jesus, on, on the side of over here, the circle that says in Christ, put underneath it peace. That, and listen, make sure you write peace with God. That's Romans 5.1. You're at peace with God. Has nothing to do with how you feel. Has nothing to do with how you live it. Has to do that you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. The moment you believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, reconciliation worked on your behalf as a gift of God's grace and put you in a position in Christ, in Christ put you in a position of peace. Peace at peace with God. It's got nothing how you nothing to do with your living. It has nothing to do with your feeling. It has to do with the grace of God. 
You understand that? What's on the other side? What, what, because the word reconciliation means a radical, radical exchange. So what was over on the other side? Enmity. Watch this. Enmity. Enmity. For he himself as our peace, broke down the middle wall, the barrier, and abolished in his flesh, rendered inactive, rendered done. Abolished is a good English word. In his flesh, the what? Enmity. The enmity. And now, because of the blood of Christ that takes away the enmity, our hostility, not the way we feel, the hostility that's present in the rebellion of Adam's sin, the rebellion of Adam's sin, the angelic conflict is the, is the hostility of the rebellion of, the, of Satan. You're no longer in that state of rebellion through Adam's sin. It's not how you're living. You could be a most religious person and believe you're really good with God, but you don't believe the gospel. You're not okay with God. You're under a barrier. It can only be removed through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, I know I'm preaching to somebody. I just don't know who. Probably somebody in Taiwan or someplace. But I'm sure preaching it. That's for sure. And, and so he removes enmity and puts peace under reconciliation. You know what you have under reconciliation? One new man. Because over here in Adam, you have all kinds of Hostile disagreements. I'm a man. You're a woman. Oh, that's bad. I, I, I'm a Jew. I'm a Gentile. Oh, no. I, I'm free. I'm a slave. Oh, no. I'm educated. I'm a, no, no. I'm racial. Oh, no, 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 no. See, that's Galatians, the third chapter. And Galatians, the third chapter, we'll see this morning, in verses 26 through 28, they say, these should no longer be there. They should no longer be there. That's barrier talk. What should be there now is because we've been reconciled and are at peace with God, we should be at peace with one another. Reconciliation is being at peace with one another as well as with God. That's why reconciliation is used in almost every avenue of our life. It's used in our salvation. It's used in our Christian life. It's used in marriage. All the divine institutions at work, reconciliation. In your marriage, reconciliation. In your family, reconciliation. In your church, reconciliation. Reconciliation is a key word, not just in our salvation, but in the experiences of our life. You do know that, don't you? I mean, if things are going bad at work, if you're blaming work or people at work, you're wrong. As a believer in Jesus Christ, you're the messenger of reconciliation. You're not the divider. Somebody else may be, but that's not who you are. You're a reconciliator. Is that what we call them, Al? A reconciliator? Just a conciliator. Reconcil well, anyhow, you know what I'm talking about. You need to be one of those people. Don't be, be, be one of those that keep dividing. And listen, you can always tell, listen, don't do this. It's where you put the blame. Well, my boss, oh, there's the blame. Okay, he could be really a jerk. Or she could really be a jerk. That's not who you are. That's enmity. You're a messenger of peace. You're the messenger of reconciliation. And it applies to work. It applies to marriage. It applies to children. It applies to families. It applies to the church. It's everywhere. Don't be a divider. Be a reconciler. Reconciliator or something.
be one who makes peace. Do you know why? It's good for your soul. It's good for the atmosphere in which you have to work. And whether they ever buy into it or not depends on whether they really know Jesus Christ. But listen, as a believer to a believer, you can institute reconciliation. And somewhere the Holy Spirit will say to them, how come you're not part of reconciliation? Why are you hostile to this person? Why are you creating a hostile attitude at the workplace? One believer, one believer in a midst of hostility can bring the peace of God into that atmosphere. We are the ambassadors of reconciliation. We are the ambassadors of peace with God and with one another. Even in marriages. Who's going to be the, who's going to be the reconciler? Somebody has to be. Why not you? You have the peace of God in you. You have the peace of God, of work of the Holy Spirit in you, Galatians 5.22, right? The fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, what? Peace. Don't tell me you can't get it. You can get it under the most hostile environment in the whole wide world. You don't get it from the flesh. You get it from the Holy Spirit of God. Don't tell me you can't go back on the job and be a reconciler of peace. Don't tell me you can't. Have. Quit putting your finger out. Start sticking it in. Stop pointing out, saying, oh, this is a hostile environment. So what? God put you in it for a reason. Be the light of Christ. Be the reconciler. Next time you go into the office and you want to choke that person, stop and have a word of prayer with him. You'll see a different environment. Bring the peace of God into that atmosphere. Bring the peace of God in there. And while you're doing it, bring God himself the author of it. Be sure to bring the author in and say, listen, we need to have a word of prayer. How about that? Think that won't be an attitude changer? If for nobody else, it'll be yours. Reconciliation is a powerful idea, and it's a powerful idea that comes right out of the belly of conversion. So over on this side in Adam, I have enmity with God, but over here I have peace with God, and that peace with God has been able to bring into any atmosphere, no matter how hostile it is, I can bring into that atmosphere the peace of God. Think about that. Think about that. I don't care what it is. You can bring the peace of God into that atmosphere. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the whole concept of reconciliation as a gift. Be sure you give it as a gift. You don't stuff it down their throat. Be sure that when you bring reconciliation, when you offer peace to somebody, it comes as grace as it came to you. You forgive as you've been forgiven. You give peace as you've received it. We just want to fight way too much. Rather than bring peace, we just let, we, they, they, bring, they bring enmity to the workplace and we bring it back. You want it? You want to fight? Here it is. Why not bring reconciliation? Point number one. I know. I know. You know, one of the things that reconciliation is about, the whole concept of reconciliation in the Latin, I love the Latin version of it. It says it settles disagreements. Reconciliation is settling disagreements. I'm a great, uh, listen, you, when you come in, I'm a, I'm a greater proponent that one of the first things you need to do is have prayer before you open your mouth. Get your heart right with God that so that your words, uh, they speak with great thundering love and not hostility. But I love the Latin version. It says it, it, the results is it settles disagreements. And, it, and it, its intent is to bring people, two, back, two people that were in disagreement back into agreement and to unity. Don't you love that idea? See, it's the whole purpose of reconciliation. 
take two that are separated, bring them back, disagreements, bring them back into agreements so that they can find unity. They can become one mind in the Lord. Are you listening to me today? Oh, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? In our lesson, Paul explained that the gospel of grace salvation radically exchanges 13 judicial charges of Adam's original sin by removing the barrier and replacing it with reconciliation. That's just one of the nine things that God replaces the barrier with. That's just one. And that's a pretty powerful one, though, isn't it? Notice that Paul explains how the barrier was broken down by the blood and flesh of Christ in this text by means of the cross. This was done so that a radical exchange under the principle of grace reconciliation could remove enmity and replace it with peace. Every time the barrier has nine things, once one's removed, a, a something else is exchanged in it. Boy, you should be so thankful every day for that. Just because of the, God, God, the, the way God treats you as his child, as if you were the only one. Because in the only beloved son, you're the only one in the beloved. He treats you as individually important. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, Christ died on that cross. If nobody else in the whole wide world believed but you alone, it would have been sufficient for him. That's a marvelous idea. That's a marvelous idea. The radical, point number two, the radical exchange of grace reconciliation is from the believer's position in Adam to the believer's position in Christ, like that little illustration at the bottom of your paper. It, in 1 Corinthians 15, 22, it says, in Adam, all are dead. In Christ, same, same, same verse, in Christ, all are made alive. He calls the... Adam calls it the first Adam, calls Jesus Christ the last Adam in 1 Corinthians 15, 45. You know what I'm teaching you this morning? Listen to me now. This is important because I know some of you go like, Whoa, oh, 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 oh. listen, this is 101. This is milk. I'm teaching you milk. I'm teaching you milk. This is not complicated. This is not heavy theology. This is not deep this is the mother's milk. And if that shocks you a little bit, this tells you why you're in this church today with me. Because I'm the man for your life, for spiritual growth. I am that guy. Whether you like it or not, I am that guy. The unbeliever's position of enmity in Adam goes back to, listen, goes back to Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15. When the Lord spoke to the serpent in the fall of man and said, I will put enmity between you and the seed of the woman, which is Christ, Galatians 3, 16. See where we got it? Oh, well, we got it in Adam. Okay. The Lord's judgment upon the serpent is where we get that idea. It's also talked by Paul in Romans, the 16th chapter, verse 20, and in Revelation, the 12th chapter, verse 17, if you're just looking for more information. Point number three. Wait. I don't know, that clock, nobody said that clock. Where are we? That clock is off. I, 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 I don't even have, no, have anybody. How, where are we? Oh, I'm at 1015. All right, Al. You got to, Jackie, you, when it gets to close to closing time, I, somebody better give me a heads up because that clock ain't giving me nothing. What? Oh, I, I need it down to 20. Where am I at? 15? I used to be able to get through notes. I don't know what's happening. God is the reconciler. Listen to this. This is really important. 
God is a reconciler, not man. God is a reconciler, not man. Isn't that interesting? God wants you so bad on his team. He's a reconciler, not man. God is a reconciler, not man, through the gospel of Jesus Christ. No man can come to the Father except through me, John 14, 6. The unbeliever is, therefore, the unbeliever is in need of reconciliation, not God. I know that might come as a shock to you. Listen to what he says in Romans 5, 10, and 11. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more having been reconciled. Notice this word is used three times in this passage. Having been reconciled, we shall be saved by, the, by his life. And not only this, much more, not only this is two pretty big ideas. And not only this, in the much more, but also we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received the reconciliation. He talked about reconciliation three times. And how important it is as a, a doctrine in your life. Grace reconciliation is the gospel message of Christ's ambassadors to the world. Second Corinthians uh, the fifth chapter verses, um, well, 17 through 21 would be a better one than 19. Listen, every believer is in Christ is an ambassador, not an enemy. Before he was an enemy, now he's an ambassador. He was an enemy. En enmity, enemy is the same concept. He was an enemy, now he's an ambassador of Christ. He's the ambassador of peace with God. <laughs> he's an ambassador of peace. He's the is a messenger in the world of God's reconciliation. God wants to be reconciled with you. He, he, he is out looking for that. He, he wants you to be reconciled with him. See, he's always been near, but you've been far away. Namely, that God was in Christ. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them. He has committed to us, the church age believer, the ministry of reconciliation. He calls us ambassadors. Now, I love this passage that Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5.20. He says, we beg you. We beg you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. Be reconciled to God. We beg you. Once the barrier of Adam's sin is removed, there's no longer a barrier between the believer and God. Now he has reconciliation in his place. Now Paul can write, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, new things have come. You can read all about that in the 50 things you receive at salvation. In closing, Grace reconciliation is a key doctrine to the healthy church because it is designed to remove all factions of personal barriers. There should be no personal barriers in the healthy church. None. Shouldn't be educational barriers. Shouldn't be racial barriers. Shouldn't be economical barriers. There shouldn't be any of these ethnic barriers, religious barriers. Should be none. Why? Because Christ reconciled us to be one in Christ. We are unified, one in Christ. Listen to Galatians, third chapter, verse 26. Watch this. I broke that, I broke 26, 27, 28 down for you. I want you to see a phrase, for you are all. You are all. Say all. I mean all. Not some. I mean all. Listen to what he says. For you are all. Sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. You are all sons of God. From the, this day, from the point of salvation forever, all the way out into eternity, you are all forever. All right. Sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 27 and part of 28. For you are all, for all of you were baptized into Christ. 
point of salvation. Have clothed yourself with Christ, positional truth. Therefore, understand there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free, neither male nor female. These social, economical, racial, all these personal barriers should not be in the church. You understand that? Should not be there. How you should view one another is one in Christ. Watch this. For you are all one in Christ. That's where unity is. That's when reconciliation comes out of the soul of spiritual mature believers and embraces and loves one another in Christ because of Christ. He is everything. Let us pray. Well, our Father, we thank you today for these have been so attentive in our study on reconciliation. What a powerful concept of theology, Father. Reconciliation as a grace gift. Oh, I'm so glad it's grace because we could work all of our life and never achieve it. Oh, we can always show reconciliation in peaceful places, but not in hostile places. Yet we're the great ambassadors of it. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, we can bring peace into a hostile environment. Somebody's got to bring it. Or all we're going to have is a hostile environment. So I thank you, Father, that you've salted us out of seeds in all kinds of different places, in marriages, in, in communities, in little sections of the community where we live, whether it's a gated community or not, it's a community. You've put us in some of the most strange places, and we wish we would all be able to live in unity, but the truth of the matter is we're a light in a dark world. We're the peace in the midst of hostility. There's great ministry there, and we're missing it by looking at the hostility rather than peace within, bringing that peace into the workplace, into the marriage, into the family, into the church, into the community. May this doctrine awaken us, Father, to this great doctrine in our soul, reconciliation. Take this money today, Father, that we've given joyfully out of a cheerful heart, not out of law. As we have reasoned within our life on your grace, we give a portion of it back. that the men of this congregation as a board are smart and wise in the way they use it to further the message of the gospel of Christ to the world. For we've made our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.